So some of you may have noticed that I recently took down a couple of my videos, in particular the video about the hypothetical ohm particle, um, which I was adding to the particles of the electron and the proton. And so the reason I took the videos down is because one of my viewers found a mistake in both of those videos. I made the same mistake twice. And so uh, I decided to take those videos down with the intent of correcting them and putting them back up. Uh, but instead, what I decided to do was um, take a few steps back. Uh, but first, I want to thank Bill for pointing out this error to me. Bill has is a uh, one of my you know one of my viewers that. Um, you know, he does a thorough review of my videos and often comments on, on them and asks me questions. And he's very diligent about crunching my numbers and keeping me honest. So thank you, Bill. Uh, this actually really uh, helped me out a lot because it forced me to take a few steps back and try to figure out um, how to not make that same mistake uh, again. And that mistake has to do with uh, this value here. 2 pi. And so I'm making this video called 2 pi or not 2 pi. And I'm going to explain to you um, how 2 pi can cause a lot of confusion and uh, cause people to make mistakes. And so um, that I will, I'm going to explain to you why uh, 2 pi, why we need to take a few steps back and have a closer look at this little guy here, um, 2 pi. So it seems as if this tiny little guy here shouldn't create too much of a problem. Uh, as you know, 2 pi is found in, um, very often found in wave uh, equations and in circular geometry. And so uh, as we all know, 2 pi times the radius of a circle is the circumference of a circle. And so I'm going to use this symbol uh, for the circumference of a circle. In uh, the standard language, they use C, the letter C for the circumference of a circle. And since I'm already using C for the speed of light and I'm using C for the unit of, of charge for the Coulomb, I didn't want to use C again just to try to prevent confusion. So I'm going to use a circle to mean the circumference of a circle and 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle as well in terms of wave uh, mechanics. 2 pi times frequency is angular, um, is, is, uh, angular frequency, which is depicted by the symbol, which is omega. It's uh, one, uh, one incarnation of, of omega. And so 2 pi times frequency is equal to angular frequency or omega. And one other place we find 2 pi is in uh, Planck's energy equation. And so 2 pi times h bar is equal to standard Planck's constant. And so these are the three places where we find 2 pi that I am going to have to address in order to prevent myself from injecting a bug into, into my program like I did before. Of particular interest, of course, is Planck's energy equation. And so, as, as you know, Planck's energy equation can be written uh, E equals Planck's constant times frequency, or it can be written E equals h bar times angular frequency. And so, uh, as, so the, the, the 2 pi parameter, when you pull the 2 pi parameter out, you can get more information. And so, E is equal to h bar times 2 pi times frequency. And so sometimes you can group 2 pi with h bar to get h Planck's constant, or sometimes they, sometimes you can um, combine the 2 pi with the frequency term and get angular frequency. And so this is where a lot of the confusion happens because uh, in, in the mainstream language, sometimes they use h and sometimes they use h bar. Sometimes they use frequency, and sometimes they use angular frequency. And if you don't keep track of this guy, 
if you don't keep track of this guy, it's possible that you're going to make a mistake. I call this the, uh, the hot potato. 2pi is the hot potato of the language of theoretical physics because they keep passing it around like a hot potato and sometimes it's here and sometimes it's here. And, um, you know, so you have to be really careful about where this hot potato is if you want to get your, uh, your numbers right. And so this stems from this uh, article from Wikipedia. This is the Planck's constant, the page on Planck's constant. And here they say, and I, I did this before in another video, but I'm going to do it again here because this is super, super important. Okay, confusion can arise when dealing with frequency or Planck's constant because the units of angular measure, cycle, or radian are omitted from the international standard, from SI, from the SI units. And so, um, in, um, so omitting the units of angular measure, cycle, and radian, so they're not saying cycle or radian, they really mean cycle and radian. So omitting the units of cycle and radian can lead to an error of 2 pi. And, and, and so in uh, the videos that I took down, I made a mistake. I had an error of actually the square root of 2 pi, which is about 2.5, 2.503 something. Um, but basically, it was because I wasn't keeping track of this 2 pi parameter that I made the mistake. And so uh, a similar state of affairs occurs for Planck's constant. The symbol H is used to express the value of Planck's constant in joules times second per cycle. Okay, so this is a uh, modified unit na analysis um, right here. And so uh, the, the international standard omits, okay, they omit the cycle term and modified unit analysis puts it back in. So I don't have a problem with um, the units of Planck's constant when written in terms of energy as being joules times second per cycle. This interprets as energy of one period. Okay, uh, seconds per cycle are the units of the period. And so uh, joule times second per cycle interprets as the energy of times means of means times. So the energy times the period. And so I don't have a problem with if mainstream had done it this way i would never have had a problem with it in the first place we need to put that cycle term in there and so uh, and the symbol h bar is used used to express its value in terms of joules times second per radian okay so um, when you use h bar you have to use radians and so the units of h bar are joules times second per radian. So technically radian is also missing from the standard and radian is also missing from my standard. Okay. So this is the revelation I had after, uh, after Bill showed me my mistake and I took a few steps back and said, okay, what am I doing wrong? Um, I need to put radians into modified unit analysis as well as cycle. And then when I do that, everything works out quite nicely as you will see. So the point that I was missing in my modified unit analysis is that 2 pi is not a unitless value. 2 pi is not a unitless uh, value. 2 pi has units radians per cycle. 2 pi radians per cycle. And so, I mean, this is not, you know, mainstream knows about this. They're just not writing this into their unit analysis. And so, um, so I'm going to have to modify my modified unit analysis to include uh, the radian term. But the radian terms are always going to cancel out because I'm always going to be in the frequency domain. So as long as I stick to the frequency domain, I should never have to write radians into my unit section. But um, if for some reason I need to switch to angular frequency, then I need to also have the radian term. Okay, so uh, this is really very important. 2 pi is not a unitless value. It has the units radian per cycle. So in this slide, I just want to quickly show you the relationship between radius 
and radian because radius and radian are very closely related, which is why they are almost the same word, radian, radius. So the, the radius, the radius is the arc length, is the arc length uh, of a uh, of the circle of a circle it's the arc length of the circle that has the angle of one radian so the angle of one radian produces an arc length which just happens to be exactly the same as the radius which so this is why radius is called radius and radian is called radian radius is the uh, the arc length of one radian okay and so radians are really important i don't want to discount radians in in my specification i do want to stick to the frequency domain which is cycles per second and not radians per second but it is important for understanding the the two pi parameter it is important to understand the relationship between radius and radian Okay, so uh, this will come into play maybe in a future video, but I wanted to point this out at this point because these two things are very closely related. So getting back to Planck's energy equation, I want to, um, to deal with the two pi's in each of these situations. So when we group two pi with the frequency term, okay, when we group two pi with the frequency term, then you end up with the units of, of angular frequency. And so here's how this works uh, in modified unit analysis with the radian added as a, um, as a term. So we've got uh, 2 pi times frequency, which is equal to angular frequency. So 2 pi, okay, 2 pi, 2 pi has units radians per cycle. Okay, so 2 pi has, this 2 pi here has units radians per cycle and frequency in modified unit analysis as unit cycles per second the cycles cancel and you end up with radians per second so angular frequency has uh, units radians per second now without a unit called rad radian um, there is no way to write the units of angular frequency in, um, in the standard, in, in the international standard, because they don't have a rad, okay? And you can't put one over S here because frequency has units one over S. And so, um, so it's very important, I think it's very important to put the rad and the cycle back into the unit analysis to specifically write them so that you can clearly see how you get from two pi F to angular frequency. So next in Planck's energy equation, we're gonna deal with this term here, which is the h bar times two pi. So h bar times two pi is equal to standard Planck's constant. And so when you do modified, the modified modified unit analysis on uh, two pi times um, h bar, you get that the units of two pi are radians per cycle. Okay, 2 pi has units radians per cycle, and h bar has units joules times second per radian, as specified in this Wikipedia page, where it says h bar is used to express its value in joules times second per radian. Okay, so here we've got 2 pi has units radian rad per cycle, and uh, h bar has units joules times second per rad per radians these two cancel and you can clearly see that Planck's constant has units joules times second per cycle just as they say in this Wikipedia page the symbol h is used to express the value of Planck's constant in joules times second per cycle but without the ability to be able to write um, the, uh, a unit for cycle and a unit for radian in the standard, in the international standard, it's very difficult to see this relationship. It's very simple, in fact, uh, you know, it's, it's actually super simple, but without the ability, without these terms in the standard, it's very difficult to, 
see this. It's very difficult to, um, to really understand what's going on under the hood. And so this is what I'm trying to get at here is that when you miss something, if you don't write something, if you, it, it, it is more elegant to not write it. It looks much prettier, but it is not as informative as writing the, um, the units specifically and explicitly. And that is what I'm trying to do with modified unit analysis. I'm trying to make sure that everything in the unit section has, is covered in the unit section. And so that is what I'm doing here. So this is basically the point I wanted to make in this video that the this 2 pi character that you see in many of the equations of theoretical physics uh, is not a unitless value. It has the units of radians per cycle. And so in future videos, I'm going to be using this. Um, I'm going to be using these units to further um, to further um, explain my own particle theory, okay, to further explain um, this guy here, which has a, and I'm basically what I'm going to do in the future is I'm just going to focus on the circumference of this. So next time when I talk about this guy here, I'm going to talk about it in terms of circumference only. And of course, if I want to get the radius and indirectly the charge of separation, I just divide the circumference by 2 pi. So if you divide the circumference by, by 2 pi, you get the radius and indirectly you get the charge of separation. So when I do everything in terms of circumference, it actually simplifies things quite a bit. And then I, um, I'm less likely to make a mistake like I did in those two videos that I took down. And so uh, thank you, Bill, again, for pointing out that um, that mistake because it forced me to take, take a few steps back and really analyze this guy here. So I think this is going to help out a lot in the future, in our future discussions. And, well, I'm just going to leave it at that.